Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we're talking about INFP's number one complaint. Whenever I meet up with INFP's, their number one complaints tend to center around effectiveness, or rather, the lack of it. So, the INFP's, they often feel they are not effective in living life. They are not effective problem solvers, they are not fast, they are not productive, they are not organized and they are not active and doing enough. So they feel they are doing too little, too slowly, and uh, in a too disorganized manner. So what they're looking for is, of course, uh, constantly working on uh, improving their effectiveness. At the same time, the reason for their effectiveness is their high conscientiousness. The INFP is the most conscientious type. They want to think about why they do things, they want to understand what they are doing, they want to understand how it aligns with them and their personality and their ethics, they want to make sure they are honest in what they do, and they want to make sure that they have thought everything through from multiple directions before they make a decision or before they do something. So of course it makes sense then that they can appear scattered, slow, ineffective, and improductive in many feats. They rely on natural motivation to do things. They want it to feel right. They want it to be because they want it, not because they have been told to do it. They want themselves to do something because they understand it, not just because they are saying what people want to hear. So INFPs, they complain about not being effective enough. And in all of this, what you'll find is uh, the INFPs uh, can take more than one form in this complaint. Sometimes INFPs will complain other people are not effective enough. Sometimes they will complain that they themselves are not effective enough. So what you see is INFPs can be equally annoyed by their own ineffectiveness as well as others. I think either you tend to project on other people and need for them to be productive, for them to do things fast, for them to do a lot, or you tend to project on yourself a need to be pr uh, more productive and more st uh, strong and more forceful in the way you do things. So what you want to ask yourself as an INFP is, am I putting too much burden on other people to be effective? Or am I putting too much burden on myself to be effective? Am I overvaluing quantity over quality? And are there ways that I can put my conscientiousness to good use? Are there ways that I can use my problem solving and my ability to think in multiple directions at the same time over my need to organize, my need to do things in a productive and efficient manner, over my need to have a swamped and busy schedule and to have always things to do? Is there a way to rely on my existential traits, my philosophical side, my introspective side to solve everyday problems? Do I need to push myself so much to use my inferior function? Because what you have to recognize is the inferior function is the number one source of complaints. It's what we complain about the most on a daily basis. It's also the number one source of stress and anxiety. So what you're doing when you're going through and complaining about the inferior function is you're going through and constantly rehearsing your stress and anxiety about everyday situations. So you're putting yourself in a situation where you cannot be happy, you cannot have flow, you cannot do things you love, you cannot enjoy things that you enjoy because you are too overshadowed by the burdens of the inferior function. And what I keep seeing with the inferior function is there are three types of people. There are the people that constantly worry about uh, their inferior function. Oh, I should be, I should be doing this, I should be doing it more, I should be doing it better but that never end up really engaging or confronting the inferior function. Instead, it hangs over them like a dark cloud of shoulds. I wish I, I should be, I will, later. <laughs> and that's, you know, procrastination. Or there are people that uh, constantly feel a need to be effective and that constantly force themselves to be effective where you go through life constantly rehearsing, I need to be effective, I need to be effective, I need to be effective. <laughs> and uh, basically what you're doing is you're holding yourself in a chain, you're being your own prison guard, you're constantly guiding yourself through life, not by what you enjoy, but what you feel forced to. And there, there you get like the Christopher Robin and uh, 
the latest movie about Winnie the Pooh, the character that forces himself to work, that enslaves himself under the inferior function. And that's the inferior slavery. <laughs> and uh, it uh, eventually becomes unsustainable. Eventually you will crack. You can't keep going like that forever. You'll become miserable. You'll become depressed. Or the third approach. I forgot the third approach. No, what I find with inferior function is uh, there are people that start setting overly ambitious uh, goals for their inferior function, impossible goals. So what they do is they say, I'm going to make a really big list, I'm going to make a big, I set a big set of rules for myself, I'm going to uh, be much more productive, I'm going to be much more fast, I'm going to do a lot more, I'm going to do it better, I'm going to do it faster, I'm going to do it more smoothly. And then they make these lists and they brainstorm and they go into this flow and they start planning that, but they never end up executing it. So that's the third type, the type that loves to be in their inferior in theory, but not in reality. And that makes sense if you are a theoretical person. You might enjoy or feel mentally stimulated by the thought of engaging in your inferior or in the idea or dream of engaging in it. You can say, oh, well, I'm going to be that person. I'm going to change. I'm going to be better. But then if it doesn't happen in reality, if it's not a dream come true, if it isn't uh, what you really want, it's never going to work. And it's just going to be an overestimation. So the only advice I can give for inferior management as an INFP is manage your complaints, set realistic expectations for yourself. Expect yourself to be 20% effective every day and 80% conscientious. So what you can do here is you can say, I'm going to do 20%, but for the most of the time, I'm going to allow myself to be in flow, to work on things, to improve on things, to rethink things, to reconsider options. But 20% of the day I'm going to answer emails, I'm going to go through calls, I'm going to solve problems, and I'm going to deal with issues. So when you've gone through those 20%, you can feel a lot better engaging in your flow. That dark cloud hanging over your shoulder is going to shrink, and you're going to feel better about yourself. And you're going to know I did what I could, and I didn't do more than what I needed to. That can also ensure that you provide the right push for yourself and the right incentive. If you can tell yourself, yeah, I have to deal with my inferior function, but only for a few minutes, it's a lot easier than telling yourself, oh, I need to engage in my inferior function. So give yourself a time frame. And also set, make sure you constantly check your expectations on yourself and on other people. Don't over push other people, don't get too annoyed at other people when they're not being effective, and don't get too annoyed at yourself when you're not being effective. Expect realistic things from other people and from yourself. And in this, uh, give other people a break and give yourself a break. Give your people a break from their inferior function. Uh, don't put too much on their shoulder. Focus on flow and focus on maintaining flow and focus on finding ways to engage your inferior function from a position of flow, which means constantly adding variation and changes to schedules and plans that you already have. Constantly reflect on and Take your time to think through and be alone so you don't get overwhelmed by everything that's happening around you. Constantly work on your natural motivation. What do I want? What do I enjoy? What do I like? Rather than constantly pushing yourself to do things you don't like. And constantly allow yourself time to introspect and to make sense of yourself and to think rather than constantly pushing yourself to be stronger than you need to be or want to be. I hope this video helps you complain a little less, and I hope it helps you find flow a little more. I'm glad you watched this video. If you liked it, go visit my Patreon page, patreon.com slash ericdor. Leave a like, share this video with others, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you guys in the next video.